away from the start, I can feel it in my heart, like All the way from the start Hey, what's going on out there? It's Sean Devine and today I've got a new tutorial. I want to talk about how to get a louder, tighter, crisper, cleaner, low end. Um, you've probably seen some other videos on my channels. I did one uh, for mixing 808s and kicks and I'm going to cover a little bit of that material but more in depth in this one and also give you some new techniques that are going to help you uh, just really get that professional clean low end. Uh, there's one problem that I hear more than any other in terms of mixing and especially with producers uh, doing beats. It's that their low end is just too full. There's too much going on. Um, things just aren't meshing. Uh, there's distortion down there that's not uh, intended. And things are just really nasty and, and harsh. Um, so if there's one thing that will expose uh, your uh, sound as being unprofessional, it would definitely be. Uh, if your low end is not proper. So I'm going to talk about a couple of ways that I used in this track, which I'm going to play back for you. Let me just uh, let you hear the intro and the hook, which has a sub bass as well as a really heavy kick drum. So I'm going to show you how I dealt with those, how I got the sound uh, to be clean and those to work together, and also the other instruments to work together with the kick and bass. So here we go. All right, so as you can hear, there's two different sections. First, we've got the hook, which has uh, this distorted sub, which sounds like this. So I've got some mid side processing done on this and uh, I'll talk about that in just a second. But then we have a, uh, a kick with just a lot of low frequency information. So let me just move this up uh, closer to our uh, sub here. And what I've done with these is I've side chained it. And the reason why I side-chained uh, specifically on this is because, again, we have a kick that has a lot of low frequency information going on. So it's all down here in the 50, which is also where a lot of our uh, sub frequencies are. So, I mean, we're right down there in the same range. So this is the trick here. Um, a lot of people will tell you, okay, your kick or your bass will win. One or the other, choose one, carve out space for the other. I didn't take this approach for uh, this song, and I usually don't for any of my stuff. Um, if I want both to win, I can find a way to make them win. And that's how I'm going to show you uh, what we did for this. And I talked about this a little bit again in the other uh, kick bass and 808 tutorial, but this will be a little bit more in depth. So, first thing we need to do is just side chain our kick. So, I have it sent to uh, bus 64, and of course, we have uh, then just routed our uh, bus to no output. So, we're not hearing uh, the send coming out of there, it's just going to trigger our compressor. So, then we have the compressor on the sub and then our side chain is set to bus 64 right so we've gone over this before now i want to talk about how this one is set up very extreme to where what will happen is to an exact length which is uh in this case it's going to be the length of the kick we are going to have the sub duck so i have the release time set at 150 millisecond right now, 
let's talk first about ratio, threshold, some of this other stuff. Let me solo this so you can just hear exactly and see what it's doing. So you can hear every time that kick's hitting, our sub is backing off just a little bit, you know, 5 dB, something like that. Not a ton, but just enough to where we're getting the punch and the transient of the kick. And then it is releasing super fast so that we're getting the tail end of the sub. And it almost sounds like one instrument, one meshed uh, kick 808 kind of uh, sub sound, which is what I was going for. So let me show you, um, first of all, the ratio. We have that basically limiting. So it's just saying pull it back as much as possible uh, whenever that kick hits. And then we'll bring it back as quickly as possible uh, since our release time. Uh, attack, you know, we want it to hit instantly. So that's there. No auto gain, nothing like that. Uh, but now let me show you how I came up with this release number. Now this is a, a trick. If you're going to do a side chaining with kick and bass this way, this will uh, get you very, very accurate in terms of setting your release time properly. So the first thing that we want to do is we need to figure out how long exactly the kick sample is, right? So what we'll do is let's just bounce um, one sample of the kick and then we'll We'll see how long it is. So let me bounce this. All right, so now we have our kick sample. And what I want to do is we'll narrow this in, but let me open this in our uh, sample editor. So let's go to, um, Can we view it in, there we go. Let me zoom out. Okay, so we are in viewing in minutes, seconds, milliseconds. We're looking for milliseconds because that's what our release is measured by. So if you look, if we select this, it is at like 160 milliseconds, right? So that's where I set my release on the compressor, or at least really close to that. I think we're at 150, right? Yeah, 150. So that just is saying for the exact length of the kick, that's how long we're going to duck on the uh, compressor. So again, let me play that back for you. All right, so that just will um, show you how, you know, if you're listening on a sub, like those two are not competing. They're actually perfectly meshed. They're like, they're on the same team, they're working together and they're just accentuating each other. And that's what you want to do uh, when you have a sub and a kick like that. And that's just a trick. Again, if, if you don't want to play the game of like which one should win, kick or sub, both can win in this case, you know? And that's that was where my mind was when I came up with um, just doing this in my tracks was like, I really want the kick to hit or I want it to sound big and still have the low end, uh, the, the transient, but I want the, the sub to mesh. So just a trick in a way that I do it. But um, let's see, what else do we have here? We've got a little bit of mid side processing going on the distorted sub. And I may do a separate video on this, but with uh, bass and sub bass, you want to add a little bit of distortion and if you can add width to the distortion that's a really uh, a good trick that i've uh, come across and that you can try out so when i say that we've already got a distorted sound as is and i think i did the distortion within the plugin i think this is omnisphere um but i'm just uh, mid side processing and we're all we're doing is we're actually we have a filter here so we're only widening by 10% which is not much in this plugin none of the low end stuff 
we don't want to widen any of that. We want that to be as focused as possible. Um, so if you look at our uh, stereo spread here, it's it's very even. So we're not messing with that that sub, but what we are widening is just gently the high frequency distortion stuff, and that will give us the perception that the bass is louder. Um, so that's a lot of the mistakes that, that you hear with a lot of the younger producers is uh, they're trying to get the sub to sound really, really loud, and they're just turning the volume up, and just pumping things way too hot and getting like that undesirable uh, distortion. So a big trick these days is uh, perceived volume. It's the sub and the kicks and the 808s. We're going to talk about it more on the second part. It's all about uh, getting your listener to perceive things as louder, but not necessarily, you know, you're just slamming the levels. Some people do, but that's not really where um, the, uh, the magic comes from. So anyway, let's move on here. Talked a little bit about that. Now let's get to this second part, which this little verse bridge. So I've just got the uh, the 808 just kind of following our uh, progression up here. Now this in this case I've already got an 808 sample where you know we've got that really fast attack transient on the front of it. And then we have some of that sub, that boominess on the back, right? So that's just, that's all here in the sample. We don't have to do side chaining or anything like that. Kick and bass. Now with an 808 like that, and when I refer to 808, this is another thing that can get a little bit tricky because people these days are just basically calling anything that's not live bass an 808. And, you know, the 808 is a drum machine. It creates uh, a kick drum. It has a lot of bass to it that you can create a long tail on it, right? And it has a certain sound to it, um, but not all of these types of sounds are 808s. Um, but this one I'm calling an 808 because this has that... It has the 808 quality, right? So just to avoid any confusion there, uh, don't, don't think that all you know, non-live bass is 808. Anyway... Uh, let me go up here and show you with an 808 like that, you've got to carve space. And the same case is in our hook over here that I was showing y'all. All this other instrumentation here, we want the kick and the distorted sub to occupy all that space down low, you know, b below 140, whatever it may be. So what we need to do is carve out space on all of our other instruments, right? So if you look at my channel strips, I've rolled off lows on a lot of stuff. Now, I haven't just gone and cranked it the same way on every single one of them, and there's a reason for that. Some stuff you want to leave a little bit of low end just so it can blend and mesh with your sub, and it, it just adds a little bit of a, a thickness to things, but you just don't want to have things clashing. So what we do is we carve out that low end to create that. And this section, all this stuff going on up here, rolling that off. So if I turn that on, it's not a ton going on down there, but we still need to get rid of that and clean it out. So on this same thing, there's not really much there. Um, this one. Yeah. So we're rolling that off. We're just cleaning everything out so that 
this 808 down here is occupying all the space uh, below. And again, this is just a mistake that I hear all the time where you'll have the 808, but you'll have a bunch of these other instruments playing in the same frequency range. And it just, if you're not doing things to uh, help the mesh, like we talked about earlier, it just becomes a huge mess. So... <laughs> Once we've created space for it, that 808 sounds really loud, right? It's knocking. But if I show you the volume level, we're not clipping or anything. I mean, I'm not, I've am not. i got the fader down. I mean, obviously there's processing and stuff, but I'm not just cranking it to make it loud. It's just I'm building space for it. And again, we're, we're making it per be perceived louder. Uh, I also have a little bit of uh, Puig Tech uh, boost on it. Just gives it a little something. But that's pretty much just carving space and then side chaining. Now, the other thing that we do is on the master bus, we can really work on our bass. And what I like to do is uh, grab a, a multi band compressor. And I usually will turn off all of the bands. Um, everything but our, our low end space. And let's just move this up and say we're only going to be dealing with uh, everything below 100, right? So let's just solo the kick and the sub and the hook part. If I bypass this, it just gives it just a little bit of glue. And glue with the low end is very important. When you have you know these heavy elements together and we're trying to just get everything to feel like it's just like really warm and and all just glued together again so we're going to just touch it with this and now the release time you'll notice is at 200 which is just about where our kick was and so what that's saying is just the kick and the the bass that's happening for this amount of time we just want to give it a little bit of glue on there Let's go over here to this other section. So I would encourage you to try uh, this multiband compressor on, and not just this one particularly, but any multiband compressor, compressor, uh, try it on your kicks and bass and just for a little bit of glue, don't rely on it. You know, don't just push everything really heavy into this. And expected to do all the, the meshing and blending for you but as just a last little you know two three percent just to give it um, that last bit of, of glue try this out I use it a lot on my master bus um, and then other than that you know it's really about again not trying to push everything so hot but just creating a little bit of space and also compensating for things that are in the same frequency spectrum so whether that's side chaining, like we talked about, or that is uh, EQing and creating space, carving space out, you've got to make things work together and not, you know, just try to have everything completely at the forefront and trying to fight for space or else your mix is just going to sound pretty terrible. So anyway, I hope this is helpful. Hopefully y'all can grab uh, something from this and uh, get better low end, cleaner low end, tighter low end and louder, Lauren.